Hey everybody, how are you doing? Welcome back to another top 5 video and today I'm going to be discussing my top 5 command words in the exam to look out for and what they mean. So without further ado, let's jump in. Number 5 is justify. So here you need to explain why you've made a certain decision or why the answer is a certain way. Yeah. So look out for this particularly in research methods, asking you to explain choices if you're designing an experiment or if you have you know identified something from a scenario and you're having to kind of explain why it is that particular type of experiment or design of experiment or whatever it might be um, as i said when you're designing a study particularly with observations trying to justify why you would do it covert or why you'd use event sampling all that sort of thing um, justifying why you'd use a certain significance level so we typically use the five percent level but if it's not you know, particularly kind of socially sensitive area, or we want to be a bit more strict, you might use the 1% level, all that sort of thing, okay? But it's about why, give your reasons, give an argument, and if, if appropriate, you might need to give some evidence for that decision, particularly, you know, if it's from a STEM. Number four is identify. It's one of the easiest command words to deal with, and it's one of my favorites. Um, but it's on this list because it's easy to miss and it's easy to waste your exam time yeah and by that i mean explaining things when you don't need to explain yeah if it says identify that is just name it or state it yeah bank that time yeah you still get the same amount of time mathematically um, to deal with you know that mark or that two marks or three marks whatever it is but it only takes you 10 seconds to write down the answer yeah so look out for that word it's a good one Number three is discuss. And discuss has made it onto this list because it can be a little bit confusing, I suppose. But if you see that, basically you're thinking about a, uh, a discussion, yeah, two sides. So if I said, you know, discuss animal rights or something, you're going to give me two sides of that argument, yeah? If I said discuss the biological approach to treating OCD, you're going to give me two sides of that. Yeah, discuss ethics, two sides of that, yeah. If you see it in a 16 marker or an 8 marker, just treat it as a normal essay and remember that there are knowledge marks in there as well, yeah. But give me two sides, give me some elaboration, maybe talk about some of the implications, some of the real world stuff here, yeah. Look out for discuss. Number two, I'm putting distinguish at spot number two in my list. I quite like this one, talking about similarities and differences, but it is typically not done very well. So tips, if it says distinguish, yes, okay, remember that similarities and differences, but make it really, really, really clear for the examiner, you know, what is it you're actually comparing them on? What is the difference, yeah? For example, if you're distinguishing between, I don't know, STM and LTM, don't just define them. Talk about, you know, one difference is their duration. STM does this, LTM does this. One difference is, the way that they encode. Uh, STM does this, LTM does this, that sort of structure, yeah? So make it really, really clear what is it you're actually saying is the difference and then explain thing A does this, thing B does this. And at number one on my list, I have put compare. Now this, again, often isn't done particularly well, sometimes it's missed entirely look out for it in paper three especially but it does also pop up in paper two in approaches to psychology yeah example questions you can see on the screen there particularly in paper three as i said but if it's approaches sometimes it'll say outline this compare it with an alternative that doesn't mean you're going to evaluate them necessarily yeah that 10 marks in that uh 16 marker there for approaches 10 of it is compare and by compare you must be talking about similarities and differences so rather than doing you know peel paragraphs like you normally would in an essay here you're going to have uh, paragraphs that are a bit more like you know here's the theme or here's the point here's what a bit like i said a minute ago here's what kind of approach a does here's what approach b does and then you could, might discuss it a bit more after that so for example let's say we are discussing um the uh, biological approach and we, we're asked to compare it with let's say the cognitive approach so your paragraph for your comparison might look a bit like this one uh, similarity between the biological approach and the cognitive approach is their approach to the scientific method. So that's the theme of the paragraph. I'm telling the examiner what is it I'm going to compare them on, yeah? Okay, now I need to explain what each does. 
So the biological approach uh, uses uh, lab style controlled uh, studies uh, and makes use of objective measures of behavior such as fMRI scans. Yeah, so I'm tapping into the features of science there. So control and objectivity. Right, so now I need to say what the cognitive approach does. So uh, similarly, again, there's that comparative language there. The cognitive approach uh, also uses controlled lab uh, methods, but arguably isn't as objective because we're drawing inferences from uh, studies as opposed to you know, directly observing things. So there's comparison there. There's a similarity. But what I did at the end there was just a little bit of, um, you know, bringing it apart, a little bit more comparison and saying, OK, well, they both do this. However, cognitive actually does it slightly differently. Yes, yeah? comparative all the way through there. OK, that's the end of this one. Those were five command words to look out for in the exam and what to do with them. I hope that was useful for you. Good luck. Keep going. You got this. Bish bash bosh.